Hello neighbors, today we're doing Shabu Shabu. Say it with me, Shabu Shabu. There's a restaurant called Dungchon Shabu Shabu and they do a, uh, a Korean style. That means gochujang, garlic, uh, gochugaru, and a bunch of other ingredients. And it's not gonna be too spicy, just right. We're gonna pick out uh, some of our favorite mushrooms and an eclectic mix of vegetables. And then in the middle, we're gonna throw in some kalguksu noodles and then finish off with some rice. It's a whole set menu. It's easy to make and it's perfect if you have guests over or if you're cooking for the family. Come join me and then see what Shabu Shabu can become. In traditional Japanese shabu shabu, uh, for the broth, we typically just use a big piece of kombu or dashima, and you'll just use that dashima broth. For the Korean version, we're gonna add anchovies, so it's anchovies plus kelp broth. Now we're gonna add a generous amount of water because the worst thing is you're having a nice shabu shabu and then you run out of broth, right? So just make a lot when you do it. This is two liters worth. And if you have the dried large anchovies um, used for broth, these are bigger and made just for making that Korean stock broth. Split it open, you see this black part? I've shown this quite a number of times, so I'm sure you know. We could just take that off. You can throw in the head as well. And you wanna clean out around 20 of these dried anchovies and toss them in the water. And here's the kombu or dashima pieces. Since this is around two liters, I would just put in a generous amount, maybe enough pieces or one large piece to cover your hand and then toss it in the water, okay? But for me, I have a lot of these anchovy kelp broth bags. For two liters, I would recommend using two. This is essentially the same thing, cleaned anchovies and kelp, just neatly in these broth bags. I'll use two, we'll put them in, and then we're gonna use some spring onion. Notice I'm using the white part, this is where most of the flavor is. About a forearm length piece, and then we could just toss this in the water. Put this on a high heat. Once it comes to a boil, reduce it to a medium and just let it simmer. Then let's get 10 minutes. Four tablespoons of gochukaru. This is the red chili pepper flakes. Four. One tablespoon of sugar. Then two tablespoons of soy sauce. That's one, two. All right, guys, then one tablespoon of honey. And if honey is expensive, you can also use oligodang syrup. All right, then we're gonna do three tablespoons of gochujang, right? This is a red chili pepper paste. That's three, good. Then of course, we want some umami in there. So we're gonna add some tenjang, which is the Korean soybean paste. We're gonna add in two tablespoons of this and two. That's a lot of flavor, huh? Of course, we're gonna cut it with some minced garlic. Let's do one and a half tablespoons. All right, one and a half. Let's mix this up. Ooh. It's gonna be a little bit hard. We have to shake it out a little bit and mix it up again until we get a nice solid color. And we must give it a little taste. Woo! I know where that flavor is going. That's gonna be perfect for adding towards uh, our broth. All right, timer's up. I'll fish this out, right, as well as the spring onion. Remove some of these bubbles, all right? And I think that should be good enough. And one thing, I want you to scoop out two or three a uh, soup ladle's worth of this anchovy kelp broth. We're gonna mix some of this in with our dipping sauce. All right, and then it's up to you where you want a hot pot. You can go straight out of the wok, but I have this nice chonggul pot, which we do sell on Gochujar, that I like to cook uh, Korean stews out of. Just add some of the broth. It might not fit everything, which is fine. We can have some of the leftover. I think that looks good enough. And I'm gonna move this over to the table. All right, guys, and then let's make a dipping sauce. We're gonna do two tablespoons of soy sauce. That's one. Two, very good. And then one tablespoon of rice vinegar. You can use white vinegar as well. It's one tablespoon in. And then remember we set aside a few soup ladles of that anchovy kelp broth. We need six tablespoons of that. One, six, very good. Mix it all up, give it a quick taste. Beautiful. This should make enough dipping sauce for two people. If you're cooking for a family of four, just double it up. And then to this, let's add just a little bit of wasabi on the side. Beautiful, the dip is made. We'll put this on the table as well. The world is yours. You can pick whatever ingredients you want for hot pot. 
shabu shabu. But the Tungchon shabu shabu restaurant, the one that I like, they use these four key ingredients. One is onion, potato, uh, oyster mushrooms. And then this is a Korean specific ingredient. This one is called minari in Korean. And uh, in English, I think it's called water celery. Both the stalk and the leaves are edible. They do taste, uh, just like their name, like celery. So you'll see this minari being used a lot in, uh, for example, meuntang, which is spicy seafood stew. Anything spicy, and especially in combination with seafood, we like to throw this in. So if you do visit a Korean mart to pick up ingredients, try picking up some minari. If you don't have this, absolutely optional. Regular oyster mushrooms, we'll just chop off the tip, the wash. And then I could just break it apart. All right, then the Ajuma at E-Mart was really pushing me to get these oyster mushrooms. She told me it would change my life. By the way, oyster mushrooms in Korean are called nutari pazat. Nutari is the oyster part, pazat means mushroom. Then half an onion. Then chop one potato. And this potato, as it cooks, it's going to make our broth. It's going to add some starch and it's going to thicken up our broth just slightly. Uh, and that's good later where we're going to add in our rice and our noodles. And then with our minari, we can cut off the base here, which is a little bit more tough. And chop this out. And the rest, we'll just chop into about finger length pieces. Come down, get one chop, and one chop here. Beautiful. I love bok choy. Cut that up in half. And then I have some leftover tofu bean curd sticks. Remember this from the mala shangwa? I've soaked this in water and now they're soft. We can cook this as well. Can't go wrong with shiitake mushrooms. Then I have baby napa cabbage. This tastes absolutely delicious in hot pots. Love it. Actually one of my favorite vegetables. Trim off the bottom. And a whole piece is too much for one mouthful. So just cut them in half. Then we have some tofu. Use as little or as much ingredients as you like. Oh, we're not done yet. We're gonna add some fish balls, Korean uh, amuk. Guys, in Asia, the love for fish cake is real. Then of course, we're gonna use some thinly sliced beef. You can use beef or pork. This right here is hanu. It's thinly sliced ribeye. Just works beautifully. Oh my gosh, just take a look at this plate. These are all things you can pick off of and dip into your shabu shabu broth. I'm gonna put this on the table now. And just about every Korean style shabu shabu restaurant, they're gonna give you some kalguksu. This is thin flour noodles. We're gonna have one bundle here and you're gonna see a lot of flour, right? Just look at my fingers. But if all that flour goes into the broth, it's gonna thicken up too quickly. So what you wanna do, get some cold water, okay? Not hot water, you don't wanna cook it. Uh, and then just mix it around like this. Gently take off all that flour and then just carefully put it on a plate. And we'll put this on the table as well. All right, guys. And for most meals, Koreans love to finish off with some rice. We need a little bit of green in it. So get some green onion. Put in around one cup of rice. And we can just fan it out just a little bit. Put the green onions over on top. And place it in the refrigerator. The rice is going to cool down and we're going to come back to it later. And that's the view in front of you. This is all the vegetables. You can eat. We have our sauce, which we're gonna add in quite soon. Our mushroom, our potatoes, our onions, our beautiful minari that we're going to add at the top. And then of course, our dipping sauce. You guys remember this electric stove top? Wow, it's been a while. Let's get this nice and hot. Woo, I'm excited. I'm gonna start off by adding around a half. You can add more or less in the beginning, but don't add everything, okay? And when you're making this at home with your family, don't forget to talk to each other, all right? Don't just look at the pot the whole time. And even before it comes to boil, I wanna add the potatoes because this is the only one hard uh, vegetable that needs a good amount to cook. So just add that in there already from the top. Once it starts coming up to a boil, it's time to have some fun. I like to just add in a base of our mushrooms <laughs> and then a, a handful of our onions. Let's start building the flavor in our soup. And then our binari. This you can be extra generous with. This is gonna all die down anyway. Let me just put this over the top. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's the shot right there. The minari is in. Whoa! Looks this like looks so good. Katie, you came out of the room. This is your lunch break. I want you to take a sip of the broth now after the minari. Oh my god, so good. Let me try. That broth is so good. Katie. Let me see if you're lying or not. Oh, it's nice, right? Oh, 
All right, guys, now enjoy. Katie, what do you want? I want the beef. Let's add some of our beef. This thing is gonna cook quickly. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the minari as well. Beautiful. Then our sauce. And a little bit of the wasabi. Not too much. Wow. Slightly salty from the soy sauce. Let's get this big mushroom here. Guys, this minari is amazing. Katie, what are you gonna go for? Oh, can I have some odeng? Put some odeng in. And some tofu, please. We gotta put some bok choy in. I think I'm gonna steal her odeng. <laughs> I mean, even though it looks really spicy, it's not that spicy. Dipping sauce with the soy sauce, I'm telling you, the, the combination of the spicy and salty is next level, y'all. Alright guys, and remember, I just added half. If you run out of soup base, you can add more of the anchovy kelp broth and add like a few uh, spoonfuls more. Alright, halfway into your meal, if you taste the broth, it's gonna taste amazing. Like, ah, oh, we need some noodles, right? <laughs> We're gonna add in those kalguksu noodles here. Use your chopsticks. Alright, since you've only been eating vegetables and thin slices of meat, you're still gonna be hungry. So this noodles is gonna hit the spot. Let's let it cook down a little bit more. Add a little bit of the minari that we have left. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Pour some in my bowl. The potato should be done now too. Get a little bit of the broth. Ah, that's our noodles right there, guys. Do you like this? It's getting hot. Mm. That's all I can say, guys. Delicious. Now at the restaurants, when you have just a little bit of soup left, or if you didn't eat too much soup, they'll scoop out uh, most of it and leave just a little behind like this. And they're gonna make you that delicious fried rice I've been talking to you about. Put this back on a high heat. And remember that rice, let's take it out of the refrigerator. And now we're gonna drop an egg into it. it comes up to a boil. I'm gonna throw in a last piece of beef or any remaining ingredients that you would like in your stir fry. I'm gonna rip this apart just a little bit. Same with the tofu, leftover. And then let's add in this rice. We'll drop it in. My favorite part of this entire meal. Break in the egg and then let the rice soak in all of that flavor. Spread it over your pot so that it can start getting a little bit crispy. Beautiful. Now if you have a little bit of that leftover dipping sauce, uh, we need a little bit of saltiness. So that soy sauce and the tartness is gonna work beautifully. All right, scrape it up. Oh my gosh, this is some of the best fried rice ever. Ah, this is gonna be so good. Give it a taste. Amazing. It's slightly bland, so I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. Give it another mix up and go in for that second bite. All right, take a look. I just cleaned up. So what did you think about the Korean shabu shabu? Did you like that spice? We used a lot of vegetables, but again, simplify your life. Just use what you're familiar with. The sauce, we nailed it for you so you can make it stress-free. You're gonna end up with like about a half left. Make it the next day. Just put in some vegetables and dinner's ready. Mm -hmm.